Welcome to a new episode of a Cricketing View podcast. My guest today requires no introduction to cricket lovers. Mihir Bose has been a reporter based in London for five decades. He has worked for newspapers and television. He has written more than two dozen books on an extraordinary range of subjects, cricket, football, history, biography, and business. Apart from Indian cricket, Bose has written about Keith Miller, Moeen Ali, Subhash Chandra Bose, Bollywood, Manchester United, Terry Venables, the Aga Khans, the Memons, the City of London, and the boom and bust of the 1980s, the Premier League, and his beloved Tottenham Hotspur. His most recent book presents the history of Indian cricket as a story in nine waves, from India's international debut in 1932 to Virat Kohli's world number one team of 2019. A link to the book is available in the show notes. In today's podcast, we talk about the question of four-day tests. In many ways, it is not a new question. Mihir Bose helps place this question within the business and culture of contemporary sport and life. It's my great pleasure to welcome Mr. Bose. Welcome. Thank you very much. Your history of Indian cricket was, I think, the first real cricket book I read. It was on my father's shelf. And I may have left it a little bit more dog-eared than I should have. And I don't think he's <laughs> forgiven me for that. But <laughs> but I have written a, a new one, Nine Waves. I know, I know. I've, I've been looking forward to reading that. Unfortunately, I didn't find a Kindle edition of it. Hopefully, it will come out sometime. Well, it should. This business of four-day test matches, I, I remember a press interview given by David Morgan in 2009 in which he said that I would not be surprised if we had four-day tests in less than a year. And we are now in 2020, and there's a renewed push, but it's still very, very tentative. What do you make of it at the first glance? Why is this happening now, and what, what is it about? Well, basically, um, what is pushing this is the need for English cricket um, to, um, if you like, make sure that English cricket does not uh, disappear or dwindle further. You mentioned David Morgan. Um, David Morgan was chairman of the ICC then. Um, He was, um, of course, a former chairman of um, England Wales Cricket Board, a very important official. And the fact is that what has happened in the last half century, and this process has accelerated since um, the uh, IPL uh, took over, since India took over, is that... Cricket is no longer one of two main important sports um, in in, in Britain. Football has completely taken over. And what do you do to make sure that test cricket and with it first class cricket does not get subsumed in one day cricket? And of course, the the proponents of um, four day tests could say that around a third of tests now played um, do not last into a fifth day, which of course means a wasted day in terms of um, facilities provided and so on and so forth. And they would argue that if you, for instance, have 98 overs a day, then you would have within four days um, um, the equivalent of five days, in fact, including one more session. So that basically, I mean, this is, if you like, a reflection of the problem of English cricket and the wider problem of how you run world cricket, because world cricket is still run in a very, very curious, um, almost club-like fashion. Um, And that is what has not been dealt with. I want to draw on your experience of covering football, because football also has been through this a, a similar transition of being a very, very popular game run by very, very small and in some cases very amateurly run clubs and businesses. And it has now become this global franchise, right, where the big clubs are basically multi-million dollar or sometimes even multi-billion dollar businesses. Is cricket sort of where football was 40 years ago or 30 years ago right now, where they've discovered that there's big money to be made and they're just not institutionally equipped to make sense of it? You have raised a very good point. And it's very interesting to look at football. Football, um, there was always in in football a professional game, um, which was not always the case in, in, um, in cricket, but also football had a central body running it. In, in, yes. in, 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 in world football, there was FIFA, which has far more powers than the ICC ever had. 
I'll come to a minute about how cricket was organized internationally but let's look at what has happened to football what has happened to football is i'm, I'm speaking to you from england yeah. we have, we now have fa cup matches going on now when i came to this country when i was a young boy which was a long time ago the fa cup was just as important as winning the league title now the yeah. fa cup the, the teams that are fielded in the fa cup are basically junior teams and yeah. the reason for that is, for the top clubs in England, what matters is finishing in the top four so they can qualify for the Champions League. The nature yeah. of football has changed. Champions League has come up, which is like international European League. You know, yeah. it goes around the world. That is much more important. The, 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 the National League in every country is important. And, the, and competitions like the FA Cup have been sidelined. Football is constantly coming up with new competitions. The Euros, for instance which yeah. is the equivalent of the World Cup for the European nations, have changed format. But, and this is the big difference, football is still a 90-minute game. The nature yeah. of the game hasn't changed. Yeah. What happened with cricket, and we need to look back at history, when cricket started declining in England in the 60s, they came up with the one-day game. Now, remember, there's, there's another problem with cricket, what may, what may be called a dysfunctional nature of cricket. What is the cricket that you and I played? We played a half-day game or a one-day game. I grew up in India, then I came to this right. country. If, if you play, if you, if, I'm talking of general players. I'm not talking of the yeah. Virat Kohli of this world. You, 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 if you played a game in India, you started at 10 o'clock, finished at 5, because by then the light had gone. Um, yeah. You know, that was a one-day game that most people, the cr cricket followers, played. In this yeah. country, where you play club cricket, you start in the summer day at about 2.33 after a few drinks at the, at the pub, and then you play on till about 8, 8.30. That yeah. is the game played, yet the test match that has come up, and people forget about test matches. Test matches didn't start as five-day games. You look yeah. at the history, the first century of test matches, most of the games were three-day games or four-day games. England, yeah. for instance, played Australia in the, in the started in the late 20s playing five-day games, but at the same time against New Zealand or the lesser countries as they were known as, um, lesser countries like a, a India, New Zealand, West Indies and so on, they would play three, even South Africa, they would play three-day games. So right. the, the point is, this idea that five-day games has always been the, the standard in test cricket is, 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 is a recent phenomenon. It's in, in, in the history of cricket, because, you know, cricket has been going on for now um, uh, over 130 years. In that sense, a recent phenomenon. And it's very interesting, again, football has understood the need to change with society. When, yes. I, when I was growing up and when I came to England, every match in this country would start on a Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. and yeah. would finish at 20 to 5. You knew that. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, you know, this, this Saturday, uh, for my sins, I'm a supporter of Tottenham Hotspur, um, their, their match against Liverpool will start at 5.30 in the evening. So what yeah. football has done, football has recognised that people just, you know, if a match starts at 3, the old days, when I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a bit of history, but it, and I hope you don't mind, in the old oh, no. days, match, matches started at 3 o'clock on a Saturday. The, the, basically, it was the working classes that went whatever yeah. fans may say, they worked till one o'clock on the factory, went to the pub, walked to the football ground, then went home for their tea, as they call it, or dinner, yeah. as we would call it. Um, but th that, that whole picture has changed. People don't, you know, factories have disappeared. People don't work like that. And now football has decided that the best thing to do, the Champions League final is played in an evening, not on a, on a Saturday afternoon. Because, yeah. why? Because it is equivalent to going to the opera. It is equivalent to going to a, a cinema show. And the IPL has, has, has worked that out. You, yeah. you have an IPL match starting in a... I mean, I couldn't imagine when I was growing up in India that you would have in the height of the Indian summer a cricket match. We used to play in the Maidan, but, you know, a proper cricket match. But you have lights there. India's got the money. Um, it's got stadiums uh, um, with, with um, lights and so on. And, and, and the matches start in the evening and it's like a four-hour Bollywood movie. So you yeah. see, what I'm trying to say is all this needs to be taken into account. Where what do we do? And English cricket's problem is that its county championship is hardly watched by anybody. Young people are not playing cr cricket in, in England. State schools don't play cricket in England. There's a huge problem with, with the South Asian community who play recreational cricket but don't come to watch England. So they are, they're trying to find, and of course, they missed the IPL boat, you know. They yeah. went in with uh, St Stanford and so on. So they are trying to play catch up, if you like, and, and trying to get a formula going which they think 
can integrate the four-day game in test with the county championship four-day game. One of my previous podcast guests was saying, you know, Freddie Wild, the, the the young reporter, he was saying that basically the 100 is the is, is the English cricket's way to catch up with the IPL. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I think it will fail. I, I think that <laughs> I, I personally think the problem again with cricket and Virat Kohli has made that point very interestingly. Cricket is is, 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 is is fooling itself into thinking that the more formats it has, the better it is. You see, football has kept its format the same. You look at all other sports, rugby, yeah. tennis. OK, tennis has slightly varied it with, with, with the tie break. But nevertheless... Yeah. A tennis match is still you. You get to you get to well, you get to forty love one more point. You win 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 the game. You yeah. win six games, and if you have a, a, a two game um, advantage, you win the set. That hasn't changed. If yeah. you look at cricket, we have test matches, right? Five days. We have um, uh, fifty overs red ball cricket. We have T twenty. Sorry, fifty overs white ball cricket. Um, T twenty white ball cricket. Now day and night matches. You know. To sell the game to to a public, you you need a, you need a very simple format. If you have too many complex formats, what are you selling? I mean, I believe in Test cricket. Believe me, I I yeah. think Test cricket is the ultimate form of cricket, ultimate form of sport. For me, and I'm old enough to watch Shubhash Gupta bowl to Gary Silver and Rohan Kanai is is something I still recall as as a boy, and I yeah. grew up with that. To me, Gupta is the greatest leg spinner there ever was, and Gary Silver says that as well. So that'll do for me. But nevertheless, people do people have time to take five days off work? Yeah. You know that is that is another question to be considered. You made one interesting point which I had not thought of at all, which is that there is an English interest in expanding, and and I noticed that you know. A lot of voices in the game, former players, current players, current managers, coaches, have, have spoken about this. And most of them are Indian and Australian. And most of the voices in favor are either English or from New Zealand. And, you know, I had made the, the fairly straightforward calculation that, you know, there are approximately somewhere between 40 and 50 test matches played every year. Yeah. And if all of them were scheduled for four days, that would free up an extra 40, 50 days in the calendar. The calendar is the one finite entity in, in this entire economy of formats. You know, that, that's what they're competing for, essentially. I, I'm also interested in this is idea which comes from football, which is, as you said, football fit into the life of the community and of the city and of the country in a very particular way. It was designed to exist Saturday afternoon where after people did their half day shifts, they would come and watch the game, right? But as life has changed, football has moved along. Yeah. But the sporting argument as to what football offers has remained the same, right? Football is still a game between 11, two yeah. teams of 11, and they're still trying to score a goal. And, yeah. you know, they still resist changing the offside law. And I remember yeah reading about how when they introduced the back pass rule in the yeah. early 90s. Yeah, I, I remember it. I covered it. <laughs> covered this the was a very well. huge controversy. And, yeah, yeah. you know, people were saying that this is the end of the game and this yeah. and that. And yeah. and it didn't happen. Right. And, um, and, and, and uh, to, just to uh, come in, um, VAR, you know, yes. which has just come into to, to, to the Premier League is causing enormous controversy in this yeah. country because people have always resisted. I, I remember speaking to both uh, Franz Beckenbauer and Michel Platini, both yeah. great players, and both of them are opposed to technology. <laughs> that, I'm not surprised by that. I'm not, I'm not surprised by that. Even in cricket, you find a lot of people still... Well, Sachin Tendulkar didn't want, uh, um, you know, decision review, did he? And, and in very unreasonable ways. You know, I mean, it is not based on sort of a technical grasp of DRS. It is just based on the suspicion, uh, which I find fascinating. But in contrast, test cricket seems to be anachronistic. I've always had this problem with test cricket that how can you play at 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning when everybody is at work? Well, let, let me let me see. It started, test cricket started, let's, let's face it. In the late 19th century, and and in a this was a completely for instance in England to give yeah. you an example of England until the 1950s late 1950s, people would take their summer holidays 
and go yeah. to watch test cricket. They would also take their summer holidays to go to watch county cricket. Now, that yes. would be impossible now. It would just yeah. be, you know, I mean, the nature of society has changed. In those days, society, let's face it, was a male-dominated society. You know, the husband went. It was mainly husbands who went, you know. It wasn't yeah. wives. The husband who went and the wife stayed at home, did all the cooking and so on. That world has changed, right? And quite yeah. rightly so. In India, yeah. where I grew up in India, there was no television. I didn't. I saw two minutes of television before I came to, this, came to England in January 1969. The television didn't come to India in a, in a proper way. It came sort of in the 70s, but in a proper way to well into the 80s, right? So going to test match cricket for five days was great entertainment. There was nothing else available. And people yeah. and people people would queue up to buy tickets and you could only get in India, of course, in those days, to see a test match, you had to buy people in people young people in India may not re remember all this, um, but certainly wouldn't know about this. You had to buy what was called a season ticket, that you had to buy all five days of test matches. Yeah, and then the, those that, those tickets would be distributed to the family members. I remember covering the seventy six, seventy seven, and um, Tony Greg tour of, of India, where where Greg masterminded a great victory on the fifth day in Calcutta, where India only had three or four wickets left, uh, um, and were uh, were bound to be beaten by, bound to be beaten. But uh, Eden Gardens was packed. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the Englishman was surprised. But I, I explained to them that was because <laughs> the chap who had the ticket was, you know, it was his share of the ticket. Yeah. The tickets had been sold for. So that world has disappeared. How many people come to watch? You know, in Wankhede, you can walk in. in. In all the test match grounds in India, you can just walk in on the day of the test match. Yes. You know, I, I, I could not have imagined that as a boy growing up. And I grew up in, in, in Bombay, as I call it, you know, watched yeah. cricket there, watched cricket at, at the CCI and, and, and later on. And later on, of course, covered test matches at the Wankhede. But, you know, that was a different world. So yeah. you are very right. Um, sport is, after all, entertainment. Sport reflects yeah. society. If society changes, sport has to change. You can't just keep it in one format and say, yes, people have to turn up for five days. Yes, in England, um, uh, a certain group of people will always turn up for England-Australia matches. Yes, because that is, if you like, two, two tribes or two, two cousins of the same family meeting in cricket. But yeah. they won't. They won't always turn up for every match. And in India, Pakistan, well, Pakistan have only recently resumed playing again. West Indies, even in South Africa, um, uh, look at the crowds there in this in this present series. Um, yeah. A fair bit of them are the Barmy Army, and who are they? Well, reasonably well-off Englishmen and some English women who are having a bit of a holiday. Yeah. How no, many I, How many locals are there? Your point about how cricket was a holiday sport is absolutely spot on because. I looked this up. In the 20th century, I found that fully 46% of all first-class matches were played in either June, July, or August. Yep. You know. Uh, Let me tell you another thing about about um, English cricket. In August, yeah, the, among the players who would play for the counties, particularly out in the south, would yeah. be teachers because yeah. there would be the public schools would be, be closed and many of the public school teachers were very good cricketers they were first class cricketers they, they would go yes. and play now you can't imagine that now yeah. can you imagine a, a, a teacher in in a, in a sixth form um, in a school um, in, in his august holiday going and playing for somerset or or or, or worcestershire or something that that's just not possible absolutely not i remember reading about about how it was expected that the professionals would just, you know, sit sit the game out, and Absolutely. and Absolutely. And and remember, until the sixties in England, yeah. um, there was a very sharp distinction between amateurs and professionals. They had separate dressing rooms. If you talk to Railingworth, one of England's greatest captains, he yeah. will recall with ab terrible bitterness about yeah. how, being a professional, he he had very poor changing facilities, and how the amateurs had the best facilities on the ground. This is in the 1960s we're talking about. We're not talking about the previous century. Much of the discourse about, oh, let's preserve tradition, and that always reminds me of Hobsbawm's uh, proposition about the invention of tradition, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, which is that we've sort of decided that, you know, well, it was always five days, and this yeah. is pure, and this is our game, and it, it cannot be mucked about with. 
is, is that that seems to be sort of the thrust of the naysayers right now. Let, let, let me tell you, the first test match ever played in this country at the Oval was three days. And, you know, yeah. in England, England, Australia for a long time was three and four days. When, when, when the West Indies played their first test match, it was three days. When South Africa played its first test match, against, both of them against England was three days. When New Zealand played its first test match, it was three days. Um, uh, um, you know, uh, um, uh, it was, you know, the first time, first time a five day, uh, a country making its debut for a five day test match was uh, when, 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 uh, when Sri Lanka was introduced to cricket in the, in, 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 the, in the 1980s. The idea that cricket started with a five day test match and when, you know, for the first century, cricket yeah. had all sorts of formats. England would play five days against Australia and, and, and three days against South Africa because, you know, they, 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 they worked out. Now, the point is, in this format, can we have a system? And that would be very, very um, considered very controversial, um, very uh, um, degrading. They would say, right, with Afghanistan, we'll only play three days. You know, with uh, Ireland, we'll only play three days. With other countries, we'll play. Maybe that's something to be considered. But whether that would be acceptable or not is another matter. That has already been proposed. I've I've seen stories about how where you know they suggest that you know they create a tier in Test cricket. There's a lot to be said for that. I think if Afghanistan can hold England or Australia to a draw over three days, that is an achievement. I think. And, and then you then you, then you 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 sort of get them in a promotional thing that you can yeah. have a you know a few more days and and that's the way to you know encourage cricket because one thing that that is that is very true of cricket you see cricket in the uh, in in the mid 19th century was the most important game in the world even america played cricket and the imperial cricket conference was set up and america didn't want to be part of anything called imperial but what what really derailed cricket was the fact that cricket never expanded yeah. originally beyond the Commonwealth and also really with the with the white countries of England, Australia and South Africa ruling the game, you know, the other countries were considered below the surface, below the below the below the stairs if you like. Yeah. Whereas you know, even rugby has expanded more than more than cricket. Japan yeah. has just held its World Cup. When did Japan start playing rugby? Uruguay is a major rugby playing country. Argentina is a rugby playing country. There seem to be two different strains of arguments which seem to be sort of talking past each other. You know, there is a there's the business case, which is about resources and about profits and about money. And I think in that this idea of the four day test is not the first effort to minimize tests. I think the World Test Championship and its sort of implicit creation of a two tier test system where some series count towards the championship and some series don't is already an effort to sort of separate out the necessary tests and other tests. And I think the four day test is a second option. But I think the cricket side of the argument is, how should I put it, far less sophisticated right now. Do you see a, a cricket based proposition for a modified form of test cricket? You know, can you imagine, for example, a test match being played over four, four evenings? I personally would like to see, first of all, in England, where the light lasts till 8.39. You know, yeah. in, in, I, I, I'm just writing a, a, a book on Mohamed Salim, the Mohamed uh -huh. sporting player who, who played for Celtic for a, for a few matches in, 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 in 1936. It's going to be made into a film. And, mm -hmm. and, and the match, one of the matches that he played in, and this was in August, kicked off at 7.30. Yeah. And played, they played a so. You know, I've played cricket in England, mind you, at a very low level. Yeah. This yeah. is not even club cricket, you know, sort of um, pick me up cricket, if you like, village cricket. And yeah. we would play till eight thirty nine. You know, yeah. I I don't see why. This is where I I talk about the dysfunction. You see, what has happened is, the first class game is no longer symmetrical with the game that is played at the ground roots level. Now that is yeah. not the case with football. That is not yeah. the case with other sport. And this is what the problem is. So therefore the first class game I think should be one in England. I think all first class games should start at two or three o'clock and then mm -hmm. carry on till eight o'clock. So that if yeah. people even after a day's work at five o'clock and, and go and watch three hours of the game. You yeah. know, we should still have Believe me, I'm a great fan of Test cricket. I think I think the the longer format of the game should be preserved. 
the games could start later on. And, and with the fly, lights on, let them play uh, up, up till 10 o'clock in the evening. Why not? I mean, I, I don't see any problems with that. The idea, if, if, if a match starts, in England it starts at 11 o'clock, just think about it. For you yeah. to go to a test, you would have to leave home, depending on where you are. Let's say it's, it's London, but even in London, to get there in good time, you know, to settle down, you don't want to arrive there two minutes before time, you want to see uh, the, the toss and things like that. To get there, say, by 11 o'clock start, you want to get there by about quarter to 11, 10, 30 or something, you'd have to leave home about 9 o'clock. And by the time you come back, after, after the match finishes at, at 6 o'clock, you, you, you're not home till 8, 8.30, which is a hell of a long day. Yeah. yeah. And on top of that, if you're not providing, what are you providing? You're providing entertainment. Yes, cricket is a lesson in life, you know, wonderful to see a batsman coping with a, with, with, with a bowler, um, a quick bowler testing you outside the off stump, a spinner testing you with his wires. That's all very well. But that is for the enthusiast. You are yeah. trying to appeal to the general public. And if you're going to tell them for five days, we are going to d take five days of your life completely out. And this is the entertainment we provide. People will say, well, I think I'll give it a miss. Maybe I'll turn up for a few hours. You know, that that's what modern society is all about. What is wrong with showing up for a few hours? I think it's perfectly fine. I mean, I, I follow test cricket. I think I'm fairly obsessive about it. But I don't watch every ball of every game. It's just sort of something which I know is going on, and I'm just checking yeah, on it. Yeah, but you see, I, I, you know, Karthik, you and me, uh, though we are both devoted to Test cricket, I, I we don't see it as as something that is a holy grail that can't be yeah. changed. But yeah. whereas many of the many of the many of the people writing about Test cricket. Um, just feel, no, it can't be tampered with, because what they feel, and this is particularly true in England, what has happened in England, first of all, England has lost the power to control cricket to India, that it mm. resents, and, you know, it's coming to terms with, it has happened in the last two decades. One must say the Indians are not making a good show of it, and they have they have lots <laughs> of things to answer for, and I'm not a fan of the, of the way the Indians have run their own cricket international cricket, but India is the powerhouse of cricket and will remain the powerhouse of cricket. There's no question yeah. about it. And secondly, the, the, the many of these people uh, regret the fact that English cricket has declined so dramatically, not on yeah. the on the on, on how it plays, but its na its place in society. When when yeah. when at the height of the English summer, football still dominates the media. It, it is interest in cricket, but it is not the way it was. When I first started uh, there used to be what was called the crossover season. So around yeah. about April, the newspapers would wonder, we've got to provide for cricket as well and football. Mm. And again, August. Now they don't bother because football rolls it all over. Uh, and, and rugby has created a little niche for itself. Cricket is struggling to create that niche. And, and, and it is really an English cricket problem. And of course, Australia with its big bash, India, of course, yeah. with IPL and so on, have created worlds. Look at the West Indies. I grew up with the West Indies being the greatest nation on earth. Now, you cannot imagine the West yeah. Indies ever having... The West Indies cricket team may, may come up again and do well. But, you know, cricket has odd things. We talk of cricket as a national sport, right? The West yeah. Indies is a, is, is a team made of 11 different islands. It's it's a, it's a it's a cricket nation which is not a which is not a, 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 a internationally recognised nation. It can't be because there is no West Indian nation. Yeah. Now, so cricket is is an odd, very odd game. And in order to make sure that cricket doesn't, particularly English cricket, doesn't lose its place, some years ago they came up with T20. That was to try and game, make the game popular. The result of it was India took over the idea and made it, you know, a world beater. And, you know, mm -hmm. change the world game. Uh, and now it has come up with the 100. It's constantly trying to find ways. Where is, where is British society or English society? Where can cricket fit into English society? It is, yeah. it's so part, many of, the, many of the, the, the great men in English cricket want to hold on to a past which has disappeared. It's a bit like the imperial uh, nostalgia that the English still yeah. have. But um, uh, similarly, there is, a, there is a sort of cricket nostalgia in England. That, you know, one can recreate the five-day test. That the five-day test is still, you know, people, when you discuss this in England, people will say, oh, no, no, spectators are turning up. Yes, they're turning up. They're mainly middle class, um, middle-aged, uh, 50, 50 plus. Yeah. The younger people are not going. The South Asians are not going. The wider community is not going. That is not true in football. They're getting crowds, you know, young people are going, you know, some diverse people are going. And the English football team is, is much more diverse than the English cricket team. Why do you think 
players in India are hanging on to purity of test. I'm not at all averse to the idea that the unlimited overs contest is something that the public will like if it is presented to them in a way which fits into contemporary life. You would prefer test cricket saying so many overs have to be bowled? Is no, that no, what you're no, saying? no, 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 no. I think I think the unlimited overs contest definitely has a place. Right? With, with, think, with, with, a, with the stipulation that a certain number of overs must be bowled during a day. The format I would propose is that, you know, you do away with the, with the lunch and tea break. And you, yeah. as you said, you have an afternoon session of three hours and yeah. then an evening session of three hours. And, you know, you leave it open to the public, you know, some can come for the whole day and some can come for I, just... I, 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 I personally think I haven't heard of that idea before, but, yeah. I, you know, I, 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 you know I, I personally think that's a very good idea. My idea would be that certainly in England, games should start after one o'clock and carry yeah. on till eight, eight thirty nine and in other parts of the country. Now, I don't know. I think I think Indian cricketers, the led by Virat Kohli, have said, yes, test cricket is important because I think um, he's gone with the flow, if I may say so. Because, oh. you know, if you're if you're in the position that Kohli is, one of the most, if not the most important captain in, in cricket at the moment, he doesn't want to be branded as somebody who doesn't like test cricket because test cricket is still the ultimate form of cricket. That is, that is true. It is still the ultimate form. But re- remember, other forms of cricket have shaped test cricket. When I was growing up, yes, uh, uh, if, you, if, if you won the toss, and at the end of the day's play, you were 250 for one. That would be considered a great performance. Today, yeah. it would be considered an absolute failure. There would yeah. be, you know, people saying, what the hell were they doing? You know, yeah. it was sort of, if you like, this was the Adam Gilchrist revolution. Or, yeah. or yeah. you know, that, you know, you score very quickly. Uh, runs are scored. Fielding is, is tremendous. Now, the whole of cricket has changed. And, and this is where people are not taking into account. You see, football has been very clever. When I grew up, Playing football, and I played football as well in my old Jesuit school in Bombay, St. Xavier's, St. So Gavaskar School. We played in rigid formations. You had an outside yeah. right, inside right, and you kept your positions. Now you played fluid positions, you see. Yeah. And, you know, there are managers. Managers have become so important in football. That was never the case when I was uh, growing up. All that has to be taken into account. In cricket, yes, football also resists change, but football has been much cleverer in the way it has looked at things. Cricket is still is still reeling from the fact that it is and particularly english cricket that it is no longer the most important sport in india is different in india but again in india this is very interesting and i remember speaking to lalit modi about it that in ipl they created a domestic product that was sold to the public because before that in india in all that you could sell was international matches not domestic matches Right. And in IPL, they did that. And I think the IPL format that they've got has worked and it has had a beneficial impact on test cricket. You know, people talk about one day cricket not being good. India now has fielders who can actually field, who are quite, who are very good. They may not be the absolute best in the world. You know, compared to what it was in the 50s, I can tell you, they, yeah. the 50s cricketers would, would, would find it unbelievable. India now has a fast bowling quartet. Yeah. You know, India hasn't had a fast bowling attack since uh, Nisar and Amar Singh in the 30s. You know, yeah. all that is the influence of IPL. One day cricket is not ruining cricket. But where I say is the, the too many formats are bad for cricket. You need to have yeah. simple formats so that you do not confuse the public. I, I agree with that. I think I think there's a, there's space for one unlimited overs format, which is one four innings format and one limited overs format. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That and, is what it should be. Yeah, I mean that's. I think that's what it will come come to. But so, where is all this going to be ten years from now? Because ten years ago, the ICC was, as I said, with David Morgan, was very sure that four day tests were, you know, a matter of months away. So, and that hasn't turned out to be the case. To give you an English example, every time one of the Queen's Silver Jubilees comes along. Uh, mm-hmm. There's always this hand wringing in the media about, oh well, what will the people say about the monarchy? And they always turn out for the jubilee. Is this is this test cricket sort of like that? Is it... When you <laughs> ask the question at a time when the monarchy is going through probably its greatest um, uh, recent crisis with uh, yes. Harry and Meghan. Um, but but uh, you see, I I think the problem here is that um, first of all, two questions: Can cricket get an international setup 
which is which is a a body that actually runs world cricket that is unlikely right. because the indians have basically taken over where england ra- ran it and I- india d- d- uh, india drives it if india goes for four day cricket we will have four day cricket but i do not see in in 10 years time i think cricket will still be in this medley what what to use that wonderful indian word kitchri you know mm-hmm. everything is tossed in and and what you need is not kitchri but a good biryani and i don't see another biryani coming i see even more of the kitchri and particularly from england because there is no clear thinking in english cricket as to how cricket can find a proper spot in the sporting calendar i i think these proposals will come out four day cricket may come on i don't know um it will it'll be it'll be interesting to see india will be the driving factor there if the indian board we'll have to see what what people like sir of ganguly and others think um say yes i think four day cricket will come but whether a a format uh, that that if you think will be will be um appropriate and will be right and will be easily uh, sellable to the public and saying this is cricket format you have red ball cricket white ball cricket of this kind this is when we played i i don't see that happening that's what we need because i i find very little uh, appetite for the sort of test cricket we were talking about where you start in the afternoon and play till till late evening and things like that which is what we need you know and mind you it's very interesting virat kohli has said he he would like more day night cricket yes. uh, i think i think what may happen um, 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 four day cricket may or may not come but we could see more day and night cricket around the world on that on that wonderful and delicious note uh, mr boss thank you very much this has been a great pleasure and nice talking to you this was my conversation with mihir boss his most recent book presents the history of indian cricket as a story in nine waves from the international debut in 1932 to virat kohli's world number 1 team of 2019 the link to the book is available in the show notes 